Russia has now received new supplies of Hwasong-11 short-range ballistic missiles from North Korea. The Russian army has already used them to strike Kyiv this summer, according to the New York Times. According to the agency, on September the 3rd, British researchers in Kyiv examined the debris of four Hwasong-11 missiles after another Russian attack. The experts deciphered the production markings on several parts of each missile. They found that the Wasong-11 missile used in the August 18th attack on Kyiv had markings indicating that it was manufactured this year. The internals of the other three, which were used in the July and August attacks, had no markings to indicate when they were manufactured. The Wasong-11 missile has a range of about 700 kilometers and can be equipped with nuclear or conventional warheads. The missile looks similar to the Russian 9M-723 ballistic missile of the Iskander-M operational and tactical complex. In early 2024, the United States announced that Russia had received ballistic missiles from North Korea. Joe Biden noted that the missiles had already been used before for airstrikes against Ukraine. The UN also confirmed the use of North Korean missiles by Russian forces. In February, Ukraine's Prosecutor General Andriy Kostin confirmed the above information and said that the enemy had used at least 24 North Korean-made ballistic missiles at that time. In March, the head of the Kharkiv Regional Prosecutor's Office, Alexander Filchakov, said that since the beginning of the large-scale invasion, Russia has launched approximately 50 Wasong-11 missiles manufactured by North Korea at Ukraine. Recall on September the 6th, the US informed its allies that Iran had sent ballistic missiles to Russia. The United States and Europe are working on sanctions in response to Tehran's actions. Sky News reports that Iran's missiles arrived in Russia on September the 4th. The shipment, which included 220 FAF 360 missiles, was transported by the Port Olya ship, which had been in the Iranian port of Amirabad on August the 29th. The Russian vessel had turned off its transponder to avoid detection. After arriving in Russian Astrakhan, the missiles were unloaded and transported by rail at Shuluk training ground. This suggests that future deliveries of FAF-360 missiles via this route could become a regular occurrence, Sky News adds. Media and consulting company notes that the 220 FAF-360 missiles mentioned are likely just one batch and do not represent the total number that may be transferred to Russia. Information about the transfer of launchers is also lacking, though they might have been produced in Russia or delivered by air. According to unconfirmed reports, an argument for the missile transfer was made in December 2023. The FAF 360 is a missile with a range of 120 kilometers, weighs 787 kilograms, and has a warhead weighing approximately 150 kilograms. It uses an inertial guidance system with satellite navigation. Iran typically launches these missiles using a 6x6 truck chassis equipped with six launchers. Western analyst and former military officer Andrew Tanner is convinced that Sirsky is preparing a trap for the Russians in the Pokrovsk direction. This, in his opinion, is evidenced by the striking similarity between the beginning of the battle for Pokrovsk and the Cold War exercises that American troops conducted in Germany. In turn, the deputy director of the Ukrainian Center for Army, Conversion and Disarmament Studies, Mikhail Samus, believes that Russians could indeed fall into a trap but on the condition that they are unable to expand the southern flank of the Pokrovsky direction. The military expert stated this in an interview with Evgenia Kutnova for the YouTube channel Fabrika Novosti. At the moment, for the Russians, this is no longer the Pokrovsk direction, but the Pokrovsk corridor, dangerously hanging from the flanks, noted Samus, that is, they need to secure the flanks, which is what they are currently doing in the area of Selidovo, Kurakovo and Ugledar. I believe that the Kursk operation is not the least in a series of asymmetric operations, the military analyst said. If it is not the last, then the Russians who lack reserves will find themselves in a very dangerous situation. They will not be able to respond adequately when each new strike is in a completely unexpected place. Ukraine is doing everything possible to prevent the loss of Pokrovsk. The Kursk operation has effectively deprived Russia of the ability to maneuver its forces, according to Commander-in-Chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Alexander Sirsky. The main target of the Russian army in Donbass today is Kurakovo, not Pokrovsk, said a serviceman of the Armed Forces of Ukraine with the call sign Son of Manaheim.
According to the Ukrainian military, the Russian armed forces are attempting to occupy Kurakovo in order to then force the entire Ugledar group of the Ukrainian defense forces to retreat along with the remnants of the Krasno Horivka group. Today, the most active section of the front is the Pokrovsk direction, but the main direction of the enemy's attack is Karlovka Kurakovo. Despite everyone's cries about Pokrovsk, the enemy seeks to capture Kurakovo which in the future will force the entire Ugledar SOU group to retreat together with the remnants of the Krasno-Gorovka group. At the same time, an additional direction of attack is Pavlovka Ugledar, with the aim not so much of capturing the latter as of preventing the self-propelled gun from maneuvering into the resulting pocket, writes a soldier quoted by Strana on his Telegram channel. He notes that the capture of Kurakovo will eliminate all risks of a possible counter-attack by the SOU in the direction of Konstantinovka and Ocheretino, which in the current situation would lead to a significant deterioration of enemy logistics in the Pokrovsky salient.